Hi, I'm Dave, welcome to the channel. Today is a good day because today's a new Revo slot day and it's this one. This is the Revo slot Marcos LM600 number five, STP livery. Now this is Revo slot catalog number RS0236. And it is a completely fantasy livery. So I can't do my usual, let's give you a history of the car and the driver and how well it did in the real world. Cause it didn't in the real world at all. That however is not a problem because what Revo slot have done this time, instead of releasing three liveries of a car, they've released six and they are cars numbered one, two, three, four, five, six. They are all different oil company fantasy liveries and they are all quite different colored cars. This is an IROC class. They've taken one of their older models and made a brand new IROC class with it. And I think it's brilliant. There's also a white kit, of course, all the usual things, parts, pop-up parts on the back. Please pay attention to these. They will help you if you want to make your car go faster. So that's that. Also in the box, of course, the obligatory two Revo slot stickers. The magnet that, quite frankly, if you need a magnet on a Revo slot like this, you probably need to clean the dust off your track. I can't see any other reason why a car would slip about enough to warrant a magnet. And the deep wood guide, which is really too deep for a Carrera track. And there's a little box of parts, little bag of parts, sorry. In here we've got a couple of nicely detailed wing mirrors. And I don't know if you can see, but on the back, they have got STP logos as well. So you can optionally fit those. And there is a rear wing. Now I've never had a Revo slot with a complete replacement rear wing before. I'm not quite sure about this because I don't think that's the bit that's gonna break. That's a really thick, durable piece of plastic. However, curiously, it's not glued down. I think this is the bit that's gonna snap if it were to snap off, but it's definitely gonna snap if that's not glued down. So a little bit of a glitch there in the uh, quality control, but it's nothing really. I can just put a bit of glue under there. In terms of the car and the color, it's very bright. Um, it's pretty much Marlboro McLaren bright. It's possibly a bit more pinky, whereas the Marlboro McLaren color is a bit more orangey, but they're broadly the same eye piercing color. The blue is beautiful. And the decals or the tampo prints or whatever they are on this car are particularly impressive. This car, I think, is another step up in terms of liveries and things for Revo slot from what they've done previously, which has always been good. I will get to that a little bit later on. First thing I'm going to do though, like I say, this is a fantasy car, so th there's no backstory to this particular car in this livery with these numbers. However, there is a little bit of backstory to STP, which most people probably know, and a bit more of a backstory to the Marcos car brand. So let's talk about that now. So obviously STP is an American lubricant and additive company. Um, it's a brand that was first introduced in 1954. Now, it stands for Scientifically Treated Petroleum and has been involved in motorsport sponsorship really since about 1970, um, most notably striking a partnership with, of course, the King, Richard Petty, in 1972, a relationship that lasted for about 40 years, I think. Uh, turning to Marcos. Now, Marcos or at least Marcos Engineering, the company's had a number of names because financial troubles are like that. But Marcos Engineering, as it started, was a British sports car manufacturer founded in Dolgethlai in Wales. Uh, 
1959 by a guy called Jim Marsh and another guy called Frank Costin. The Marcos name is, of course, the first three letters of Marsh and the first three letters of Costin. Uh, the company had an interesting history, to say the least, as it went out of business in 1971 with what amounted to a fire sale of bits, tools, prototypes and so on, for the following year in 1972. Another company acquired the stocks and assets but never actually produced any cars. In 1976, the original founder, Jem Marsh, bought back the name and relaunched the brand and in 1981 was producing kit cars and produced those until 1992 when they switched exclusively to factory built cars again. It was at this point that they launched a new model, which was the Marcos Mantara, which then evolved into the Marcos GTS, which then further evolved into the Mantara LM 400, 500 and 600 series. Of course, this is, as I said, the LM 600 series with four, five and six litre V8 engines respectively. The LM600 was purpose-built to meet the regulations that made it eligible for the FIA GT2 class and competed in the FIA GT and British GT championships, as well as the BPR Global GT series, running three seasons, 95, 1996 and 1997. Marcos then started producing another evolution of the car, the Mantis, and ran a one-make Mantis Challenge series. But the series really only ran for two seasons, and after that, into the 2000s, the brand sort of dwindled away, finally going into full voluntary liquidation in 2007. However, that was not the end for the LM600. Former Team Marcos driver, the Dutch racing driver Cor Yusa, competed in the Dutch GT Championship with a car through the 2000s. He won the championship in 2002, 2004, and again in 2009 in a Marcos. And he also retains a license to manufacture cars and has done so, make, making both the GT3 car and a modified Mantis, which he has named the Marcorelli. Now, back to the car in question. I said earlier, although this livery is a fantasy livery, I think it does mark a bit of a step change in Revo Slot's production and quality. I mean, yes, I have a number of other Revo Slots, as you know. Now, I have observed, as I've got three of these of different ages, quality of the top has played pretty much the same, but the quality of the mechanics inside, the refinement of that process over the three versions of this I've got, you can tell this is the newest one, even if you didn't know. It runs smoother and quieter than its previous one and so on. So there's an evolution in the engineering side of what Revo Slot are doing. But more so here with the body because you will notice this is a fairly new revo slot the only non-gloss finish piece on it is the rear wing here's another one that came out last year again it's glossy all over this one's a bit older but again it's glossy all over they've gone for a period of time where they've concentrated on upgrading the engineering underneath, having got a decent body. And then they've now taken it a step further. So if I take, for example, this Viper, it has a satin finish on the plastic spoiler. But all of these pieces of black all around here are all gloss. Now you will notice on this car, these are all a satin finish as well, along with the wheel centers. And this all the way along here, all of this black is satin finish. This silver piece is satin finish. And yet, the decals on the satin piece aren't satin finish, they look like decals. Now I know this is kind of tampo print or whatever it is, but they've taken it another level now, Revo Slot. They've got, they got the paint nailed a long time ago. They got the Christmas of the decals nailed a long time ago. They've worked on improving the engineering, the gearing, the, the fine tolerances on that stuff. They've got that up to spec. And now they've gone for the body. And yes, I'll put this on the turntable and show you around it. 
and you'll be able to see what I mean about the the matte effect on the black pieces, the way that the kind of orange stripe is also a matte effect, but it's all one decal or tampo print. And it's all applied over this incredibly shiny surface. All of these decals are amazing. And, you know, as we've come to expect with Revo Slot, there are no defects in the paint whatsoever. And the detailing, well, you just can't fault it these days. So, yes, I think this is showing us the way forward. They've nailed the running of the things. We thought they'd nailed the liveries, but they've started adding different paint finishes or surface finishes to the body itself. So I think, as I say, this marks a step forward and a very good one at that. And so now to the bench, and obviously the first thing I'm going to do is deal with this rear wing. And because I just do it to all of my Revo slots, because it stops the rattle, but allows the motion. Just a couple of little bits of electrical tape, just to dampen down the join between the two parts of the chassis. And then while I'm here, I will just check the gear flow. It's not bad. Could be a little bit tighter, but not too bad at all. I'm not going to go through a full tuning analysis of one of these Marcoses because uh, Georgia Area 51 Raceway and Harry Wise did a great live session about tuning these cars up really well. And I thoroughly recommend you watch that. It's going to be a lot better than me warbling on about it because they really know what they're doing. What I am going to do here though is even though there's no rattle on that interior. I'm going to put a little bit of aluminium tape or aluminium tape, if you like, just front and back here, just to put a little bit of tension into the plastic so that if it feels like it might want to rattle, we can probably dissuade it from doing so. That one's not very well connected either, is it? That'd be why they provide you with a spare wing then, because they don't trust themselves to glue these ones on properly, perhaps. So, yeah, I think that'll do for that. Uh, turning to this, I may put a digital chip in it in time. This is a really old style Carrera digital chip, but it should, even this one should still just about fit around that motor look. And then it would locate through the hole. There's no hole drilled here because there's just a gap and that is where the LED would poke through. So that's a fairly straightforward fit. I have done plenty of other videos on how to do this. Please look in my Revo slot videos playlist and you'll find plenty. But essentially Ignore those two wires. Connect that red and black to that red and black. And this purple and grey to the motor. And you're done. Stick it down with a bit of blue tack. You don't need me to show you that again. So other than that, I will just go around and check 1.5mm hex. 
and everything is nice and tight. And it's just, you know, basic no-brainer practice this. You should just do it anyway. Yeah. Now the gear mesh, as I say, it's not bad. It could be a little bit tighter, so. These two screws are made of cheese. Be very careful of them. You will strip them otherwise. Now the thing here is that not only can you adjust the position in and out, there is a bit of movement to adjust the rotation of the motor as well. So try and get that nicely seated. So there is just a tiny bit of play in there. Not a great deal, but I can just, you should be able to feel it, not see it, as they say. And then I'm just going to pop a little bit of oil in these bearings. A little bit on the end of the motor. And pop it on the track and see how we go. I'm not going to overly fuss with it at the moment. One thing I would say... It's very different about this from my other Revo slots is they've all got pretty much four identical wheels on them. This has, well, I mean, they're tiny, tiny little rubber band tires. Very, very low profile compared with the rears. So that's a bit of a difference. Now, maybe that is why people say, oh, this car is so much better than all the others or stands out differently. I don't know. We'll put it on the track in a minute and find out if there is any truth in whether a Marcos is faster than all the others or not. So I'll put this wheel back on here, tyre back on here. There don't even seem to be any real casting marks on these tyres. They seem very good indeed. The rears are super soft as they always are with a Revo slot, so a few laps and they'll be round. There's no point putting them on the truer machine. So, as I say, a bit of oil, pop the body back on, and we'll go to the track. So, here at the track, all I've done between the last bit of video and this one is I've run this car around the track a few times, slowly, but just to break the motor in and the gears in a little bit, and to take the edges off the tyres. So, here we are now, the first full laps in anger with it. It's effectively straight out the box, this. This car feels really, really planted. The, the guide really does want to stay in the slot. And I'm, I feel like I just want to push this car and push it and push it until I have the inevitable oops. But you can see it's really hooked up. But the back will step out, but it really doesn't want to stay there. It pulls itself back in line really, really well. I don't think I've ever had a car go this well straight out of the box. This is amazing. Just keep pushing. Oh. Well, there we are. Look at that. That's amazing. Straight out of the box, 5.649 seconds. That's just 0.3 or so of a second off the lap record. 16th fastest lap ever. Some of those are not me, some of those are other drivers. So if we look at the leaderboard, I put in a few extra laps and got a bit quicker again. Top of the leaderboard, there's two Porsche 911 GT3s, which I have tuned and tuned. Down from that is the Mercedes CLK, which is a beautifully handling car. I've given it some tuning and the Viper I've tuned a little. That Alpha is just a freak car for those small two litres. And next to it, at eventually a 5.474 lap straight out the box. That car is phenomenal. It's ahead of plenty of other Revo slots as well. I love it. So, I need to sum up about this car. I think you should get one if you haven't got one. It, it feels incredibly planted on the track. It, it, much better than any of the other Revo slots. I think when these guys say, oh, this one's the fast one, I can understand why they say why, especially on a twisty track.
So as always, thanks for watching one of my videos. Uh, if you liked it, you will find a button specifically for that. Please subscribe to the channel. It really does help. And if you hit the bell, you'll get a notification the next time I post a video. And as always, check out this Slotcar channel.